The 582nd edition of the MMA Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. You can win up to 325 times your entry with their new Pick 8. Sign up with promo code MMASGPN to claim your special pick and first-time deposit offer of up to 250 bucks in bonus cash. That's Underdog Fantasy, promo code MMASGPN. We're also brought to you by Rhythm. Get the best data-driven props and picks from Rhythm. Claim your seven-day free trial today by going to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash rhythm. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash R-I-T-H-M-M. Howdy ho, DeGenerinos. Welcome to episode 582 of the MMA Gambling Podcast, the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. Let's send this one out to Malcolm Bamford. We were just talking about how great he is off air. Let's talk about how great he is on air as well. But we love our, our co worker, Malcolm, around these parts. Uh, if you don't aren't familiar with his work, get familiar with it. He hosts the MLB podcast, he hosts the Premier League podcast. He's a good all around dude. A good listen, a good crack. Um, so check out uh, Malcolm. Thank you. He won't be on this episode. Uh, I'm sorry to say. I am going on vacation in August. Maybe uh, Gumby can have Malcolm on just to steer the ship. That, that would be a crazy, crazy ride if, if that was the case. Anyhow, uh, I am Jeff. Uh, what's what's my new name? Oh, uh, Ice Villager Fox. I, I've been accused of living in an ice village uh, by the Louisville resident in our <laughs> in our Discord. I think so, it's Louisville. Uh, Louisville uh, uh, expert. Uh, it sure is hot up here for for a nice village, but anyhow, <laughs> I'm Jeff Chalks Fox. Normally is what I go by. Thank you for coming to the show. The UFC is back, and it's not in the apex. So, but it's a middleweight main event. So you know, uh, it's it's a mixed bag of things. It's actually we have actually have what three middleweight fights I think on the just the main card alone. So it's a very UFC fight night card. Uh, one little spoiler. One I had a lot more question marks about fights than I normally do. Uh, breaking it all um, so <laughs> with my co host. That would be Daniel Gummy Vreeland. Everyone say hi to Dan. Hi, Dan. Yeah. You talk now. This one was also one of the ones where I was just like, there, there are, there, there are 14 fights on this card. And I was like, I, I didn't know there was 14 fights on this card until I started <laughs> breaking them down. And I was like, Oh, and all of them are like, razor and uh, let me ask you this with the razor close ones did you find yourself going well i might as well take the underdog since we're here uh and i felt like i did that on too many yeah. you remember what we were talking about production wise right before we went on air it's happening right now by the way but anyhow uh <laughs> your mouth's moving but anyhow um yeah i i did end up taking dog i'm like a lot of times and I, w- I wasn't just like, oh, I'm going to take a dog here. It was uh, it was a case of, I'm not paying that uh, uh, favorite price <laughs> for that fighter. It was more of that the case. Like, I'm not paying minus 150 for blank blank. So, you know. But, uh, yeah, m- maybe we'll end up on the same side of a lot of these. But, yeah, um, the one good thing is we have some decent lines. You know, not a lot of huge, huge favorites. I think the biggest one we have is going to be one we're going to cover today in the prelim episode. It was minus 549, which is pretty steep. But nothing else even comes close to that. They're all like two hundreds is, is the highest that you get. We don't have any, anything even above three. So that's a positive, right? Yeah. And I would just say in general, like I, I did felt the same exact way. I was like, I can't believe I'm about to spend this kind of price on this guy. And then I looked at his opponent. And I was like, or girl or gal. Uh, and then I was like, do, do, do I really want? And then I was like, no, I think, I think I have to, uh, you know, like yep. there, there were a few of those too, where you're like, I don't want to pay favorite price on, yeah. Brad Katona. Uh, and then you're like... Uh, uh, the Canadian. But I, I... No, he's Irish, I'm pretty sure. I know. Um, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> he's just like Loopy. He's he's, he's got abandoned it. our country. Except for Loopy didn't... You know, Loopy came to your country and then left. He developed yeah. an Irish accent somewhere. Like, I know. He's, he's gone... <laughs> yeah, he, he's gone full out. So People yeah. hate on... Uh, people hate on Mackenzie Dern and her accent. At least one of her parents is Portuguese. Yeah, uh, well, is, is Brazilian rather and speaks well, Portuguese. Was she, was she? I'm sure she was raised speaking right, Portuguese. Right. I, I, yeah, I, like, I don't. <laughs> I don't hate on her. Uh, she, yeah. She's when you're around, it, when you've grown up around Brazilians and then like you sneak into your Portuguese. Like I'm sure the accent comes out the, the same yeah. way. I know that when I'm around certain people 
like I say wicked a little bit more often than I do otherwise, <laughs> you know, like it comes yep. out, right. I'm sure when yep. you're around a certain crew, the aboots, uh, come Aboot, out the, yeah. the stories. Uh, I'm sure that same thing happens for, there's no reason for Brad Katona to have an Irish accent. He's yeah. not Irish. He's never been Irish. He's just like a guy who went on, uh, like a study abroad trip and came exactly. back with an accent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I ever met up with the hockey gambling podcast hosts or two thirds of them in, in person, yeah, there would be a lot of a boots and A's uh, rolling for sure. Um, and all the people complaining about Mackenzie Dern's accent would not complain about it uh, to her face if they were lucky True. enough to, to be with Mackenzie Dern. So yes. Um, all right, before we jump into this here card, but we're actually we're actually selling it pretty good. We're, we're telling you there's good yeah. lines and stuff. I need yeah. to tell you, we're giving away stuff. We're not just giving you away uh, winning picks. We're giving you away prizes. Uh, a couple promos going on the NBA finals tip off this week. Finally, after what a week and a half off. Um, and we're giving away a hundred dollar cash cash and a hundred dollar gift card to the listener who wins our NBA finals prop contest. Head over to sports gaming slash NBA finals to enter <coughs> cough, cough, excuse me. I was ill yesterday, but I've, I've, I've come off my deathbed to, to make it for this episode. A few people, Ed. Okay. So we're giving away NBA finals. Uh, prizes prop contest and not to be outdone the hockey gambling podcast guys are running a stanley cup contest with a hundred dollar cash prize and a hundred dollar gift card go to sports slash stanley cup to enter they are not starting i think till saturday or something it's been it's been uh it's been a minute but for a guy who does a daily best bet article for our, our website it's you know i i've been dipping my toe into wfba and mlb and you know so I hit my first WNBA one. It's the very first one I played. So nice. my thing, maybe that is my thing going forward. We do have a podcast for that, ladies and gentlemen, WNBA podcast. I think that Bill and Trell uh, host that. So make sure you check that out. All right. Are you ready to jump in? USC Lul Val. It's Lul Val. Lul Val. Lul Val. Val. How come Jim Cornette never says it like that? He's a <laughs> famous resident and I've never heard him say Lul Val, but maybe Ryan H is actually their, their more famous resident. Um, we can also call this UFC fight night Cannoneer versus Imavov. A, a, at least it's a couple of top middleweights. That's that's mm-hmm. what separates us from a UFC Apex card, I guess, right? Uh, it's going down Saturday, 5 p.m. Eastern time. Is that a good start time for you, Gumby? We always have to check on Gumby and whether it fits in his schedule well or not. Yeah, it fits in my schedule. I'm good. That works. Okay, good. Take a big swig here. All right, that will be the prelims. And as Gumby said, we got 14 fights. Yeah, when I was breaking down these fights the other day, I'm like, oh, wow, there's still like four more to do. I haven't <laughs> even seen the, I can't even see the end of it yet. So we're doing eight, eight. today. Is that right? Eight. Oh my God. Buckle up, people. It's going to be fun. <clears throat> Don't worry. It's going to be fun. We're starting off, actually, uh, like I said, 5 p.m. ESPN, ESPN Plus for the prelims, ESPN, big ESPN for the main card, if that makes sense to you. KSC Yum Center in Louisville. <laughs> Kentucky, uh, 14 fights, as we said. Let's kick things off with a women straw weight belt. Well, we actually, the women are getting a few bouts here, which is uh, good to see. Uh, this is a uh, straw weight belt be- between Puya Tumar, it's not a Tumar, and Rayan Amanda Dos Santos. Three, five minute rounds. Let's tell you about Tumar first. Her nickname should be It's Not Up, instead, it's the Cyclone. Uh, she's eight and four with six knockouts. Uh, she'd been knocked out once, submitted three times, so she'd been finishing all her losses. This is her UFC debut. She won four straight fights and not, has not lost since January of 2020. That was against Stamp, Stamp Fairtax, which was a, uh, you know, that's a solid loss to have on your on your resume. Uh, she's won three straight fights if you finish. Was regional champion. She went one to three in one championship, which is the biggest promotion in the world, so she's stepping down here uh, to the UFC. Used to fight up at flyweight, even higher up at bantamweight. 2013 pro made debut, plus 240. Dos Santos, 14 to 7, two knockouts, eight submissions. She'd been knocked out once, submitted once. 0 1 in the UFC, 3 1 over her last four. She did lose her last fight, which was her UFC debut. She went 2 0 in Evicta and was the champion there at Adam Weight. Come on, bring Adam Weight aboard, people. Come on, UFC. Uh, she just also used to fight at Flyweight. 0 1 in the on Contender Series. Who did she lose to, Gumby? Oh, Jasmine like, Jesuda, this is at uh, Flyweight, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And she was favored in that fight, too, and she lost. Yeah, I mean, uh, she didn't belong at flyweight, which is the, no. the wild one. Yeah, yeah, up twenty pounds than than probably what she should be at. Uh, regional champion on top of her Invicta championship, uh, so her mantle is full. Uh, inch height over Tomar, two years younger, minus two ninety five. So this is, I think, the second biggest favorite we have on the card. And I'm gonna go dog. I'm gonna take Pooja Tomar. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Look, I, I like Kai and Amanda. I, I, you know, I really liked her fight with Julia DeCorsi. 
um, in Invicta. But, like, the bottom line is she's an atom weight. And Pucha yeah. Tamar is – so, first of all, Pucha Tamar has made a living out of basically closing the distance on people who are much taller than her. Because at at straw weight, you know, being only five foot, I think she's five foot two, she's used to having a five foot five gal in front of her, a five foot six gal in front of her. And instead, today she's gonna have a five foot three one and one who doesn't have a physicality advantage in front of her, too. Yeah. You know, Hi and Amanda, if you watched her last fight, like I'm not gonna say she's weak for the division, but she's not you know overly strong. And if you watch Tomar, like her takedowns are pretty strong. I don't love how like like, I, th- I think she lacks some fundamentals in some, like, kind of key areas. Like, if you watch the fight with Stamp Fairtex, she kept catching Stamp's kicks, which, by the way, is a, a hell of a feather in her cap. And then she tried to hit this single leg that basically allowed Stamp to take her back because it wasn't very fundamental. And the same thing with her striking. Like, she's a brawler. Like, if, if you wanted to talk about her hands, she's a brawler. I mean, I guess her kicks probably don't feel that way because she's got, like, a little bit sharper in terms of kicks. But like on the feet, she brawls a little bit and she's used that to close the distance and get in close and, and mess up people in the range. And High and Amanda looks tentative on the feet and, and I'm not just in her last loss, but in her last couple of wins too. It takes her some time to get going. I don't think she'll have the wrestling. I don't think she'll have the physicality. Um, and I'm not sure she'll have the aggression to even take the judge's scorecard. So I, I think the the stab on Pooja Tomar here at plus 240 is definitely worth it. I hear everything you're saying. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going with you. I have I to go with that. Hi, hi, Ann. I don't think I said hi, Ann, did I? Hi, Ann, Amanda. Uh, I, uh, I, I can't go with a fighter who in India has to India has to prove that that they can produce some. She some, hasn't fought in, in India. Though. It's know, not it's like true. she's fighting for Super Fight League or whatever they have yeah. over there in India. Like she, she's fought for for good organizations at least. Yeah, she, no, she, she started her career at Super Fight League. Actually, lost a fight in Super Fight League oh, too. Come on, no, that, that's not, <laughs> Yeah, that, that that's not the only reason. It's it, it, the experience. Is, actually, actually, that is a big reason. The uh, the resume is a big reason. Uh, to Santos, I love her resume more. She got more experience. Um, yeah, and I, I I'm not willing to take a huge stab at Tomar, especially um, like you said, she's not super developed at this point. But who's to say? Who's to say? Uh, people like dogs, so people are gonna like Gumby's pick more than mine anyhow. So there you go. And uh, no shade on Super Fight Lake, right? I'm sure it's fantastic. No, some, some shade. It's not even samurai <laughs> fight house. <laughs> no. Well, in India, it, it's still you know MMA still new there, so they are on the on the come up. So maybe yeah. Kumar will will put them on the map. Hopefully not this this uh, Saturday though. All right, let's move to the men's side. Let's move up to bantamweight. Cody Stamen versus Taylor Lapolis, U.S. versus France. Actually, people were actually talking about this fight in our Discord. That's the type of people we have in our Discord. So get in there if you're those type of people as well. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Discord. I'm going to tell you about uh statement first. He's Mr. Wonderful. He's the Sparta. He's 21, 6 and 1. Seven knockouts, two submissions. He's been submitted twice. 7 5 1 in the UFC. He's won two of three and two of six. Did lose his last fight. That was back in May of 2023. Used to fight at Featherweight. He's got multiple championships on his mantle. Correct. Get that. The shirt, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash store, or get the shirt I'm wearing. Not the exact shirt I'm wearing, but a replica. Um, what else do you get? And get sticky, obviously. Uh, Stamen, 2011 pro MMA debut. Old one is a pro boxer. Better striking stats, more active landing strikes than Lapalus. And he's outstruck his opponents in the UFC by 0.76 strikes. He's at plus 225. Double impact, Taylor Lapalus. What does the nickname mean, Gumby? Uh, <laughs> he's, he's, he's got four knockouts, four, six submissions. So maybe he's a double threat maybe that's it uh, maybe it translates to something different in french maybe uh he's four and two in the ufc over two stints he's six and seven six and one excuse me over his last seven he did lose his last fight though he also has multiple region championships on his mantle crack at the shirt sports game the comp slash store get sticky and all that stuff used to fight a featherweight as well 2012 pro mma debut one of those pro boxer nine inches reach over stamen three years younger he's outstruck his ufc opponents by over a striking half 1.54 strikes per minute Better grappling stats than Stamen, minus 250. Uh, give me the favorite, uh, Taylor Lapalus. Um, yeah, Stamen kind of had a, a burst there where we thought, oh, he's, he's doing okay now. But uh, I think Lapalus is is a better fighter. Nine inches reach is <laughs> nothing uh, nothing to uh, to sneeze at, for sure. And he's also uh, on top of his grappling. Uh, on top of his striking, he's also very uh, very solid grappler, which is something that that Stamen, um, Stamen kind of relies on too as well. So give me Lapalus minus 250. Yeah, I, I went back and I, I reminded myself of like, because I, I too looked at this fight and was like, do I really like Cody Stamen still? And then I, I reminded myself that like his resume really hasn't aged well. Like I remember no. him beating Brian Kelleher and being like, 
oh damn you know like that's a good win and then like i don't know did that age well um and then you could say the same thing about like you know right when he beat brian caraway it was like man brian caraway is like number 10 in the division and instantly cody stamen was ranked and he's been you know right on the cusp of that ranking or in the ranking since then and i, I mean like then brian caraway just kind of went away didn't he like he, he was that, that was kind of the end of brian caraway and you want to go back and you look at his resume and, and a lot of fights feel like that and he's dropped a lot of fights and then just from a stylistic standpoint as you pointed out lopolis is going to be almost unhittable with that level of reach for Cody Stamen. It's going to be really hard for him to close the distance. And even if he does close the distance, I feel like Lopolis does a lot of the things that Cody Stamen does in terms of his like physicality and the clinch and stuff like that. I don't know if he's as good of a wrestler, but I think physically he's strong enough that he's going to shake a lot of that off anyway. So um, is, is it my favorite negative 250 favorite we'll see <laughs> on this card? Probably not, but I do think... <laughs> Uh, Cody Stamen is going to have a really tough time closing that distance. Double impact. We both picked him. So double pick for us as well. All right. Before we move on, we're going to tell you about underdog fantasy. A new underdog fantasy thing is going on right now. It's called pick eight and is now live for the NBA finals. Create entries with up to eight picks and underdog will automatically double flex entries. So you can miss up to two picks and still win your entry. With more picks to make and extra ways to win, the excitement is higher than ever. The best part, you can win up to 325 times your original amount. That's that's a pretty high multiplier there. You can all you can now use specials and boosts on all flex entries. So you can use Gumby already gave you some underdog picks earlier on this week for the NBA finals, right? Uh you had Luca over, I think his points 31 and a higher, half. Higher on his points. Higher than, and, right, excuse me, higher and than. And I had yes. higher than <laughs> on uh, Al Horford's three-pointers yep. and higher on Derek Lively's rebounds. Do you still like Horford's even with Porzingis coming back? I uh, like it a touch less, uh, yeah. but I, I do think there's a good chance that he winds up being less marked in this series. So, uh, and it was yeah, only one and a half. He, he can hit two Oh, two okay, yes. Yeah. That's all right. He can hit seven yeah, sometimes as well, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't miss your chance to try it out before it's gone. Here's what you need to do. You can sign up with our promo code MMASGPN. Claim your special pick and first time deposit. Offer up to 250 bucks in bonus cash. Underdogfancy.com promo code MMASGPN. The Golf Gambling Podcast is leading us in signups this month. So come on, people. You got to sign up. We can't let a yeah, bunch man. of wimpy, wimpy golfers beat us tough MMA people, right? That's All right, right, here's another fight that was already spoken of in the Discord. Um, our man Jong was in on this one. It was Eduarda Moira from Brazil versus Denise Gomes from Brazil as well. And this is uh, three, five minute rounds at straw weight. Gomes, D is the nickname. Eight and three with six knockouts. She's been knocked out once. Two and two in the UFC. Loss, win, win, loss is the pattern. Uh, one and oh on Contender Series. Used to fight up at Flyweight and up at Bantamweight, which is crazy to think because she's not a very big girl. Uh, she's one and oh, what went one and oh in Victor. She's five years younger than Moira. She's outstruck her UFC and uh, contender series opponents by 1.15 strikes per minute. She's at plus 145. Moira Rhonda is the nickname because everybody's nickname is Rhonda now for some reason with no H, too. Crazy. Uh, she's 10 and oh, four knockouts, five submissions. One and oh in the UFC. She did miss weight in that belt pretty badly. It was like four pounds or something. I think she's like 119 or something ridiculous like that. Uh, one and oh on contender series, five straight fights. She's won to be a finish. She's got multiple reach championships on her mantle. Correct get the shirt, sports game at slash store. I uh, used to fight at flyweight, four inches of height, three inches of reach over gomes. Better striking stats, better, more active landing strikes, and better grappling stats uh, based off of her two fights uh, that she's had in the UFC. Uh, she outstruck her opponents uh, in those two fights by 5.16 strikes per minute. She's at minus 160. Gumby. I'm taking Eduardo Mora. I, I think, uh, I think Gomes' last fight with uh angela hill just absolutely cooked me on her for a really long time anybody with any takedowns should beat denise gomes really easily right like uh, she went into that fight angela hill took her down over and over and over and over again and eduardo mora but i mean like she's she trains with jelton she's got that jelton almeida style only in a women's straw weight like She's just going to go to the well all the time. And yeah, like Denise Gomes has got the power shot. She throws the big right hand. She knocked out Bruno Brazil. Like, we'll always remember that. But also, like, she kind of got ragdolled by Angela Hill. And not that Angela Hill isn't strong, but, like, the, the strength being, like, the only thing that's making those takedowns happen. What happens when we add Eduardo Mora's technique, too? Because Eduardo Mora is a 
very good wrestler in terms of and very good with like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu trips too. So I think she's just going to spend this entire tight fight on top, possibly even just get to uh, Gomes's neck or something like that. Give me Mora. We're different again. Ooh, you like yeah. Denise Gomes? I like her in here. I, I like a, um, a a girl with with this knockout power going up against someone who hasn't exactly been tested at the highest level as of yet. So uh, and Eduardo Moira is no Angela Hill. Angela Hill's proven that she's. I mean, she's better wrestling. Level. She's better yeah. wrestling than Angela Hill yeah. is, and Hill got we'll five see. takedowns. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, Angela Hill is is uh, on the come up apparently. So yeah, no, give me uh, give me the younger striker with. Uh, better experience and crazy power and let's see what happens gonna be at plus 145 all right we're gonna have a fun saturday different on picks right yeah <laughs> all right we're, we're switching back we, we're going women's straw weight men's band and weight women's straw weight back to men's band and weight uh daniel marcos versus john castaneda um we've got peru right is that where he's from yes peru versus united states of america uh, we'll tell you about the Peruvian first. I'll be Marcos Sancora is the nickname. Do we know what Sancora means? Have we discussed this before? Yeah, it's it's where he's from. And also, if you say it fast, it sounds like the the Spanish word for heart. Nice, very good. He's fifteen and zero with one no contest. I'll forget, but so you have to tell me again next time he fights about three months or so. Uh, fifteen zero with one no contest, eight knockouts, two zero with one no contest in the UFC. The no contest came in his last fight. One zero on Contender Series was regional champion. Used to fight at featherweight, ninja height over castaneda two years younger better striking stats more active lightning strikes than castaneda is uh he's outstruck his ufc and contender series opponents by 1.75 strikes per minute pretty solid number there he's at minus 105 this one basically has been flipping back and forth as a, as a pick him castaneda of course is sexy maxi s-e-x-i emma m-e-x-i 21 and 6 eight knockouts six submissions he's been knocked out twice four and two in the ufc he's won two straight bouts and four of five Missed weight twice at Bantamweight. That, that was quite a little while ago, but still uh, something to keep an eye on. One and all contender series used to fight at uh, featherweight and lightweight. 2012 Pro on May debut. Two inches reach over Marcos. He's been outstruck in the UFC by and contender series by 0. 0.2 strikes per minute plus 100. Will we differ again? This one was this one was one of the question mark ones for me. <coughs> it's so your. Or oh, is it you're me? Up. It's me. You're you're up, right. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, I was hoping you would go first here. Uh, I ended up landing on the side of Marcos. Um, once again, like the power, uh, he, he's a slightly better striker as well. Um, and I think I liked um, his resume better when I went through it. Uh, I had to go through so many of these, these fights, um, getting all the fighters mixed up. But I, I definitely like his power more, and uh, I think he's a better striker overall. So I, th that will uh, be enough for me to take him at minus 105. I'm taking John Castaneda. I, I think uh, I, I think Marcos, first of all, I mean, his resume looks nice, but that's because he didn't win that fight against Davy Grant and somehow was gifted it. Um, and that's coming from somebody who picked Daniel Marcos and and had a Mar Daniel Marcos ticket in that fight. Um, that was an MMA God's give it, uh moment right there because he, he didn't beat Davy Grant. Um, I, I just don't trust Daniel Marcos' wrestling defense. Like, if you go back to his contender series fight, he got taken down by Brandon Lewis, who, you know, I – I don't rate particularly highly, and he got taken down multiple times. Now, he got back up, which is good for him and is obviously a positive sign, but John Castaneda is not Brandon Lewis. John Castaneda wrestles with the best up there in Minnesota. Um, he's got really good top game. He's got great arm triangles. I, I think Daniel Marcos is going to find himself on the back regularly, and we've seen Castaneda stand on the feet and trade with people too. Like I actually think he's got better power than Daniel Marcos. Daniel Marcos, he's a volume guy. I, I don't think he's got like – like even the a lot of the the TKOs he's got on the regional scene, a lot of those are just like smothering guys with too many shots. Castaneda's got like a bit better like one hit power uh, than Marcos does, and then on top of that has all the wrestling and the submissions too. So I, I'm gonna go with Castaneda here, especially now that he's flip flopped into being an underdog too. All right, we did differ again. We did differ again. Was this a tough one for you, or was this easy for you to pick? I think this one was more tough for me just because I love Daniel Marcos. Like I'm a big, you know, you know, I'm a big Peruvian MMA guy. I'm starting to pick against them seemingly every time now, which is kind of a yeah, shame, but I, I think they just, they just keep getting these bad matchups. Uh, and I think John Castaneda is a terrible matchup. for them. This should be a fun fight though. It yeah, should be a good matchup for us fans though. Definitely. All right. Before we move on rhythm, I got to tell you about rhythm and it's spelled R I T H M M. All our fan friends on YouTube can see that right now in, in their, I orifices. If you're betting on NBA player props, then you need to download Rhythm. Rhythm gives you a menu of the best player props for every single NBA playoff game. 
make it easy to go through and find the best props to put your money on in seconds. Rhythm's predictions are backed by over three years of data and the team of data scientists and quants. Quants is one uh, name we have not been called yet, Gumby, but who knows? Someday, maybe we'll be we'll be called quants in a derisive way. Uh, that focus on fine tuning our algorithm to give you the best shot at winning. Rhythm pairs his predictions with player prop graphs to help you feel even more confident in your picks, which you can make wherever you normally place your bets or DFS picks from superstars to bench players. Rhythm finds the best player prop lines, all backed by AI data, without you needing to endlessly scroll a sports book. Rhythm also allows you to create your own custom NBA model so you can get AI back money line spread and total picks for every playoff game. Claim your seven-day free trial today by going to sportsgamblingpockets.com slash rhythm. That's sportsgamblingpockets.com slash R-I-T-H-M-M. And NYRA, we are brought to you again. Bet the Belmont Stakes at Saratoga with NYRA Bets. Join now to claim your $25 free bet and $200 deposit bonus just in time for the Belmont Stakes at nyrabets.com slash SGPN25. Need an extra boost? Bet the Penn Mile with a bonus. Earn $10 win or lose when you bet at least $100 on Penn National on Friday. Visit nyrabets.com to opt in. Last night, all get ten dollars win or lose when you opt in and bet at least hundred bucks at Monmouth Park on Saturday. On Sunday, it's your chance to win big at Monmouth Park. Grab a share of twenty five hundred bucks when you hit the last two trifectas. Just opt in at nyrabets.com and get ready to cash in on the excitement. The winning streak continues. Score another twenty bucks win or lose when you bet at least hundred bucks on Asin <laughs> Asinibio Gumby. How do you say it? I'm not looking at the ad. As in Niboya down some Monday. And remember to get your $25 free bet and $200 deposit bonus for the Belmont Stakes. Go to myrabets.com slash SGPN25. I'm in Ice Village up in Canada. I don't know about Asinoboya downs, okay? We don't have those up here. Okay. <coughs> we do have a cough, though, unfortunately. All right. What were you, we're not Actually, we're not switching back to women's strawweight, finally. It is a women's fight, though. We're switching to women's flyweight. That's my voice cracks. Andrea Lee versus Montana De La Rosa. This has to be a loser leaves town match, does it not? I would have to think so. This is a couple of whoa. They they still have another fight, do they? Okay, interesting. All right. Um, tell you about De La Rosa first. Monty twelve nine and one one knockout nine submission uh, eight submissions. Maybe I'm foreshadowing. Maybe she's got a ninth one coming up. Uh, she knocked out once, submitted twice. Five five and one in the UFC. Zero oh, and three over her last three. One and three over her last four. One four and one over her last six. So it doesn't really get much better the farther back you go. It's not once since June twenty twenty one. Used to fight at strawweight, miss weight at strawweight. Now she's flyweight. One and one the Ultimate Fighter was regional champion. An inch of height over Lee, six years younger. She's been outstruck in the UFC by 0.51 strikes per minute, plus one thirty five. KGB Lee is thirteen and nine. Three knockouts, five submissions. She should have been submitted once. Five and seven in the UFC. She's lost four straight. Before that, she won two straight. Before that, she lost three straight. So 0 and 4, 2 and 4, 2 and 7. Has not won since November 2021. Was regional champion 4 and 2 in Evicta. 2014 pro MMA debut. Kickboxing champ, boxing champ. An inch reach over De La Rosa. Better striking stats, more active lightning strikes. And she's outstruck her UFC opponents by 0.93 strikes per minute. Minus 150. It's you, isn't it? Thank God. It's you. This is one of the ones I'm like, I can't pay that price on Andrea Lee, can I? Yeah, you can. Uh, yeah. I'm going to take Andrea Lee. I, I I think you're right. I think it's a loser's leave time match. But the, here's the thing. Andrea Lee, particularly good at keeping her feet and not getting taken down. Uh, and that's the only thing Montana De La Rosa needs in order to win, right? Like she's not going to outstrike just about any woman in this flyweight division. Um, you know, like she, she just doesn't have the striking acumen to, to beat women there, especially not somebody like Andrea Lee. I don't think she has the physicality to get Lee down and hold her down consistently. Um, you know, you mentioned Lee's only been submitted one time. That was at Invicta 16. Uh, I, I want to say it was Sam, uh, Sarah Diello, De Diello, if I'm remembering yep. correctly. Um, so, like, it's been so long since Andrea Lee has been submitted. So, like, the paths to victory here for me are just too narrow for Montana De La Rosa. Negative 150 actually doesn't look that bad on Andrea Lee uh, with all the things considered here. I, again, I just think... I think it's such a bad matchup for somebody who needs to use her physicality in Montana De La Rosa. I was going to pick De La Rosa, but I, I'm, I'm having uh, pictures of her just getting destroyed in the feet by Lee, which is probably what's going to happen. And Lee's been used to people trying to take her down her whole career because um, she is a kickboxer first and foremost. So yeah, Lee is going to have to be the pick here at minus 150. We're reluctantly uh, taking Andrea Lee. All right. Men's band weight. We're flipping back. Uh, Bracketona. 
the Canadian Irishman versus Jesse Butler, the American. Three five minute rounds. Obviously, Butler, 12 and 5, one knockout, eight submissions. He's been knocked out twice. Oman the UFC, five and one over his last six, got TKO'd in his last fight. That was back in June of 2023. Uh, used to fight at featherweight and lightweight. One knows a kickboxer, pro kickboxer, four inches of height, nine inches reach over Katona, plus 460. This is our this is our big favorite here, Brad Katona. Superman. 13 and 3, one knockout, three submissions, never been finished in a fight. 3 and 3 in the UFC over two stints. 5 and 1 over his last six. He did lose his last fight as well. 4 and 0 oh on the Ultimate Fighter and a two time champion, the only two time champion of the Ultimate Fighter. He's fight at featherweight and lightweight, just like Butler. Regional champion, 2014 Pro May debut. Better striking stats, better, more active landing strikes, better grappling stats, minus 549. I will take the trader, Bracket Tony here. Um, just way better fighter than uh, than Butler. Uh, I think he's better on the ground and, and on the feet and far better high-level experience as well. So give me Katona. I'm not betting this in real life. I'm not betting back Brad Katona at 549 in real life, but he's my pick to win. Yeah, I mean, there's probably still value at 549. And I'm yeah. saying this is like a, a Brad Katona hater. Um, if you didn't catch Yeah, the, you really he, don't like him, do you? Yeah, he was so annoying on The Ultimate Fighter. <laughs> um, he was, it's your I fault mean, for watching. Actually, basically. both seasons of The Ultimate Fighter he was on. He was so irritating. My wife didn't watch the first one, but she did watch the second one she was on. And she was like, was this guy this annoying the first time he was on? And I was like, yes, yes, he was. Um. Yeah, he's irritating as all hell. But at the same time, like, I and I don't mean to say this like uh, derogatorily or or to try to be mean or anything. I'm just not sure Jesse Butler is UFC caliber at this point in time. Like, I I think back to some of his fights on the regional scene, like that fight with Dimitri Ivy. He didn't look like he was ready. Um, I, I want to say his loss was to Colin Wright, if I'm not mistaken. And that dude's like, I want to say that guy's like eight and eight in his pro career. Uh, and like that was his last loss. He lost to a dude who's like a 500 fighter basically. And it, you know, like I, I just think he, he's got some things that he does really well, but like, I mean, Brad Katona kind of does everything really good. Um, he He's not amazing at anything, but he's like pretty damn good at everything. Like he's good enough at defensive wrestling. He could wrestle if he needs to, he, his hands are fast enough. Some, he puts enough volume on people. Like, I don't think he's great. Uh, you know, like in, and even in his, his ultimate fighter finale, the second one, like, you know, he had some moments where he, he looked like he was not the better fighter, but Jesse Butler's just like, I mean, he's taking a step down in his second fight here. So yeah, give me Brad Katona. Yep. Katona. He's also good at accents as well. Right. So we've got to give him that. Very so, good at accents. Uh, yeah. Katona is both our picks. All right. We're sinking back up here. Let's see if, uh, how we do in the two more fights to go. Ladies and gentlemen, we're ripping through these fights. Um, all right. We're on to a welterweight fight. Charles Radke. Carlos Praches, U.S. versus Brazil. Uh, Radke is known as Chuck Buffalo. Everybody knows that. He's 9-3, four knockouts, two submissions. He's been knocked out once. 2-0 in the UFC, 6-0 and over his last six, including winning his last fight via knockout. Was a regional champion, 0-1 in Bellator, used to fight at lightweight, 2012 Pro MMA debut, 0-1 Pro Grappler. Uh, he's outstruck his UFC opponents by 0.26 strikes per minute. He's got better grappling lean stats than Praches plus 200. Carlos Praches is the nightmare for his opponents. He's 18 and 6. 13 knockouts, 3 submissions, never been finished. Uh, knocked out twice, submitted 3 times, so he has been finished. One and only UFC. He's won 8 straight, 7 straight via knockout or TKO. Has not lost since June 2019. Regional champion. Used to fight at middleweight. 2 and 1 in 1 championship, so he's fought at the highest level in the world. Uh, 2012 Pro on May debut. 2-0 as a kickboxer and the champion there. Own one in Muay Thai, four inches height, six inches reach, three years younger than Radke, so all that strongly in his favor. More active landing strikes than Radke. He's outstruck his, uh, sorry, he's been outstruck by his one UFC opponent by 1.57 strikes per minute. He's at minus 225. This one's I'm, you. I'm going Pratchis. Uh, I'm going Pratchis all day. I, I am not impressed with, with Chuck Buffalo. Um, he came into that Blood Diamond fight, and I was like, oh, this should be an easy roll for him. I'm pretty sure I made him my lock of the week that week. And he went one of six trying to take down Chuck Buffalo. One is or uh, trying to take down Blood Diamond. <laughs> Blood Diamond, yeah. Chuck Buffalo, all time good nickname fight. He he took one of six on Blood Diamond, who was, you know, like just a kickboxer and had no wrestling. And he still couldn't get him down. And now he's going to fight Prochess, who's got this massive reach advantage on him, is going to easily keep on the feet. 
and and Prates is one of those guys too who just like measures you up until it's time to like put you away. He did it to Mitch Ramirez on the contender series. He did it to Trevin Giles in his first fight. It might not look like he's doing much early on, but my God, when he turns it on, he's just going to turn the lights off of Radke. So yeah, give me Carlos Prates here. You like him via knockout, do you? I do. The prop, I mean, I guess the prop looks a little bit nicer, but I don't know that I like it enough. Yeah. I've been I've been having a tough time picking my prop of the week. You'll have to check on tomorrow's show to see what I eventually yeah. pick. I forgot to, I was going to start planning those in advance, and I forgot. So I'll have to do my work before tomorrow, wink, wink, and see how, how we do. All right, yeah. Uh, Prochez is looking like a, a very solid fighter here, so... Hopefully he comes through for us on Saturday. All right, let's go to our main event of the prelims. That would be a, another fight with the Brazilian Anico figure. Uh, lightweight fight, Tiago Moses from Brazil versus Ludovic Klein from Slovak Republic. He's not fighting an octagon somehow. Um, this is three five-minute rounds. Uh, let's break it down for you. Moises, 18-7, four knockouts, eight submissions. He's been knocked out twice, submitted once. Seven and five in the UFC. He's won three and one over his last four, including winning his last fight via TKO. One long contender series, was regional champion, used to fight at Featherweight, 2012 Pro MMA debut. Two inches of height over Klein. He's been outstruck in the UFC and the contender series by 1.72 strikes per minute, plus 110. This is another almost a pick fight. Mr. Highlight, Ludovic Klein. He's been living up to that nickname recently. He's 21, four and one, nine knockouts, eight submissions. He's been knocked out once, submitted twice five two and one in the ufc he's won two straight and he's gone undefeated in his last five four and one over that stretch won his last fight via tko uh his last loss was way back in october 2021 used to fight at featherweight missed weight at featherweight but doesn't really matter now he's at lightweight right uh 2014 pro mma debut two inches of reach over moises better striking stats more active landing strikes and better grappling stats than moises he's outstruck his ufc and contender series opponents by point two two strikes per minute actually he didn't fight in contender series so forget that part he's at minus 120 so a close fight on paper to kick to close things up i, I gotta take Klein. he's just looked fantastic as of late just a finisher everywhere um he's like i said he's been living up to his nickname mr mr highlight um and i think uh you know i think he can best moises wherever this fight ends up going so give me mr highlight here I mean, he's looked phenomenal lately because his last four opponents, th- one of them still in the UFC. Uh, oh, it's easy to, yeah, it's, it's easy to look good against, uh, well, let's see, AJ Cunningham. Uh, <laughs> J- actually, he didn't, he didn't look good against Jai Herbert. He, he drew that fight with Jai Herbert. Um, or her, is it Herbert? He's it's born, Herbert. He's, he's from England. So, yeah, yeah it's yeah. Herbert. Of course, yeah, his, his name you say like <laughs> French, but you say Cormier, though, still. Um, yeah, I mean, did he look good against Mason Jones? I guess, yeah, like, I, I is mean, it like, Mason or is it Mason? Mason Jones. <laughs> my, my point here is, though, regardless of whether or not these names are French, uh, it is, it is a, his strength of schedule is terrible. Uh, yeah. and if you turn around and you look at Tiago Moises, Tiago Moises, first of all, I think we both have to agree he's the better grappler here, whether the stats bear it out or not, he's the better in terms of his jujitsu and his wrestling and all that kind of stuff. This is a fight where if Klein can keep it standing, he's going to win. If Moises can get it to the ground, he's going to win. Moises took down Benoit St. Denis. He's the only guy I've seen, with the exception of maybe Elijah Zaleski Dos Santos did in that one weird short notice welterweight fight. But like Tiago Moises took down Benoit St. Denis. That is worth noting because that's not an easy thing to do. And on top of that, his submission skills, like I said, they're just top notch. Like if you want to even go back to his time in LFA when he hit that helicopter armbar, like this guy does really great stuff on the mat. I don't know that Klein is going to be able to defend all that. Klein gave up takedowns to guys like Nate Landwehr, who I don't rate as highly in grappling as Tiago Moises. So I think when you go back and you look at which one of these two have like really nice stats on the surface level because they fought guys like AJ Cunningham on short notice and which of them have like maybe a little bit rougher stats because they had to fight Benoit St. Denis on his ascent to, to stardom. Like some guy think, named Islam Makashev. Yeah. He also fought Islam Makashev in a, main, Dariush. in a main <laughs> event too. If I'm not mistaken, he fought Islam Makashev, right? Cause I, he filled uh, in yeah, for, I think it was. Yeah. I think he filled in um, for yes, it was, Bobby yeah. Green or something like that. So like you fought Bobby Green too. Beat yeah. I, I mean like look at that group of humans. We're talking about him fighting and he's still, got decent stats and, and he's looked really good on the mat. So I'm just going to trust the jujitsu of Tiago Moises here. Uh, I think he gets Ludovic Klein down enough here and, and 
picks up some uh, some underdog money. You know me, I always take a striker, and I took a striker here. So, all right, a lot of we differed a lot more than I expected. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, it will be a highly contested Saturday. Uh, lots of trash talk probably in our in our Discord. Let's recap before we get out of your your holes. He has Moises. I have Klein. Both have Praches. Both have Katona. Both have Lee. He has Castaneda. I think he just likes the nickname. That's why. Uh, he's in the sexy Mexis. I have Marcos. He has Moira. I have Gomez or Gomes. Is she a Goma? Denise Gomes. Gomes. She's a Gomes. Denise Gomes. Yep. When I say her first name, I realize it's Gomes. We both have Lapalus. I have Dos Santos. He has, it's not. Hey, you muted yourself again. <laughs> Did I get all those right? Yeah, you got them all right. I, my my knee muted the mic. That's that's what happened. So I, I got a long legs gummy. It happens. All right. Um, I think that's all we got to say, right? We'll be back tomorrow very, very shortly. Uh, thanks for listening and or watching the show. Make sure you have subscribed to us on YouTube. The subscription subscriptions keep on ticking up. So I appreciate that, as does Gumby. Uh, maybe by half a year. That's our goal. Half a year, what we're going to have a thousand subscribers. So let's do it. You muted yourself again. Malcolm, uh, for crying out loud, uh, muting myself. All right, you can hear me again, right? Yeah, you're good now. <laughs> full drawing. Gumby will not edit this either. No, this is all getting left in. I edited last week's out. You're getting this left in. <laughs> and anytime Gumby screws up an ad read at the start, he gets edited. But no, That's not right, not right. me. <laughs> All right, sportsgamingpodcast.com slash Discord. We'll, we'll continue our argument in there. Uh, you guys can uh, participate as well. You can argue about how, how you should pronounce Louisville or Louisville. Um, that's at sportsgamingpodcast.com slash Discord. Twitter, of course. People love arguing on Twitter. We, we don't really uh, wade into that. But if you want to contact us there, you can. Um, we may not get back to you if if you want to argue with us. It's SGPN MMA. Gumby runs that. Maybe, maybe he likes to argue. I don't think he does, though. Um, he's at Gumby Reland. I'm a Jeff Fox writer. Get in my sub stack. Uh, thank you. Someone actually just paid for a year subscription. Thank you, whoever that was, for helping feed my family. That's at moneymma.substack.com. If you have no money and you don't want to pay for any of my content, you can still enter my pick'em contest uh, for the UFC every week for free. Uh, Gumby's got Top Turtle MMA podcast. I think you've already told us who's on it, but you're going to remind us anyhow. Uh, we're talking an Akon Wanless, who is on uh, Octagon 58 yeah. this weekend, and then Miguel Baeza, who will be talking off to kick off the show uh, tomorrow. There you go. Um, and what else can you do? You what else have I have I told the people everything? I think I have, except for the mothership, of course, sportsgamingpockets.com for all our content. Sportsgamingpockets.com slash store, sportsgamingpockets.com slash Patreon. Now should, we shall be back tomorrow, as we said. Hopefully, I'll have uh my locks, dogs, and props ready by then. It'll be Mr. Wonderful Jeff Fox and the Cyclone Gumby Vreeland, and we shall talk to you then. Bye.